All right, ladies and gents, here we are. This is the second to last best of five decider in Titans League Silver. And it's exciting because we have two very different situations. We've got Lan in the blue. Uh, Lan was once a top 10 player. I remember in, I think, 2020, he was well into that top 10. Uh, and he played very well in 1v1s and team games. I even remember 2v2 World Cup where he and Tato were dominating back then. For Lan, the story's been interesting. Uh, has still played the game, but hasn't really, you know, committed like a true professional for the game because he's got a job. As far as I know, he's like a lawyer or something. I don't know his exact, I don't know his life, but um, I know that he's got a job that he's had to commit to. And so it's been hard for him to, you know, drop everything and play Age of Empires. But, you know, while he's been around on the ladder, he hasn't really been playing events and he signed up for Titans League and that's awesome. So he could win this series here and then he could move on the gold. And then, you know, if he were to say, let's say, get top eight in gold, then ultimately he's in the top 24 for the next season. So, Land possibly showing that he really wants to take Age of Empires 2 seriously again. We'll see what type of level he'll bring here today. And his opponent is a player who, win or lose today, is going to be very happy with how Titans League has gone for him. Uh, he was around 2K. Uh, he, he was seventh seed in the bracket, and he ended up beating the third, second and the third seed, I think, actually. Uh, in King Boo and then Andre. So, like, he's already surpassed maybe any expectations he had for himself, and he's already impressed a lot of people. Um, and the most notable series with Philip was when he beat Andre 3-2. He was down 2-1, I think, came back and won 3-2. It was a pretty epic series there. Um, he's gone for the Persians, and a little bit more information about Philip. Uh, he is a German player, and around, actually, I think I already stated around 2K, 2K1 rating. Has, he's not like new on the block, really. Uh, I've known of this player for years. I recall him playing a lot of team games. Uh, in fact, I think a lot of his team games would have been played with a lot of other players and within a German community. Uh, NC is, I think, is NC Zone. I don't know if that's even still active. Forgive me, guys. But uh, anyways, people used to use that for team game matchmaking uh, and like team game lobbies. And it's just a bunch of like higher rated players who really want balanced team games. And I think he was part of that crew. He's gone for the Persians, a civilization that I think is the better of the two civilizations here. Uh, and he even had an interesting build here where he understood that he got additional plus 50 food uh, as the Persians at the start. So he was able to go to wood a little bit earlier. Combine that with the fact that Persians also get plus 50 wood meant that he had a dock up and he's got his first and now second fishing ship on the way. So like this build order is very clean. Uh, you could see other civilizations for this, but Persians, this is one of the classics for any little water build. They're really good at it. And so I had said when I saw the draft, I saw Atacama was game one. I saw some of the civs and then that we have like arena and houseboat as Phillips home maps. I really think that he has an opportunity strategically to get advantages over land. We'll see if he can take advantage of it and win the full series. He is probably going to be clicking up here to the next stage here in a moment. And my expectation is scouts, but you never know. Uh, and I would expect the same from Lan as well. Uh, Franks, farm bonus, forage bonus, more HP on their scouts. They tend to be pretty good. I, I mean, if it goes full feudal, it can be a little awkward because they don't get bloodlines. But Franks are Franks, as we say. Uh, they, they just... Things end up feeling easy and smooth for them once they get rolling in feudal. So we'll see. Um, are Franks okay at mixed land maps like this? I don't think Franks are a civilization that I would prioritize. Do I think they're bad? No. Uh, I, I think they could be really solid, but I think there are civilizations that can be played to a greater peak. Uh, example is the start we've seen so far already for Philip. He's on the way to Feudal Age faster. He's got four fishing ships working. Uh, he's going to be in a really good spot to accomplish a lot of things here. He's actually sending a villager this way. Uh, which tells me, is he going to try and be greedy and dock this south? Or is he going to try and get the land's water? It's very rare to see someone try and get to the opponent's water. Uh, people will contest and try and dock other areas. But in my mind, I feel like a barracks here and then a stable. So you can use all that food to go scouts. Makes a lot of sense. I don't know if he's going to be able to do everything. But I mean, if he can... I think even if he can just get the dock up to start, 
get the dock up and get the wall the villager wall in and then also get the stable that would be tasty man all right but well, we've got a barracks here for philip and the dock is going up and man this is such a clean build this is so good yeah, like, he can add the fishing ships later, but now the villager's at least gonna be building the dock and is on shorefish dropping off food. And the stable's up. Wow, this is- I'm telling you, man. I didn't watch his earlier sets. So, I-, I what I'm unable to do is tell you, uh, exactly how clean his build looks. But, he's just the type of player, and it was the type of draft that made me feel like he was gonna be happy with things, and I'm impressed so far. Uh, Land's gonna go for a stable as well. Land with double lumber camp. Uh, the only difference there is it's on a different chunk of wood and spread out a bit more, which could actually be very helpful. And Land actually has an interesting wall possibility here, like a little wall in towards the TC. Actually, he's pretty realistic here for him. And meanwhile, Philip's going to do a wall around the wood line. This is a bit more standard. And then ultimately, his gold's pretty far on the back. Berries, everything will need to be taken, but. Fifth fishing ship is now on the way for Philip. Persian Town Center also works a little bit faster now, so lots of big reasons to like Philip's position. But Land has more scout HP as the Franks, and Land gets the walls down. And I'll be curious to see how Philip manages this now. He did scout this wood line. It feels like this is an opportunity for him to tower this wood line, maybe. And he's probably not happy to see the walls there. But he still continues to move forward. Land just trying to stabilize. He's farming a lot already. He's on berries already. And Land's got quite a few scouts on the way. I, you can tell Philip is an aggressive player here. Like, he really wants to force the issue. But unfortunately, at this stage, he might need to settle for pulling back. It would be really sneaky of Land, but I could actually see him deleting this wall and running through here soon. And Philip has done exactly what I said a moment ago. He realizes, well, I got to do something. He'll see his scout. Uh, we'll see land scouts here. So that'll tell him that he can tower. And I really like that idea. Uh, that'll disrupt the wood line. And that just punishes land a little bit for sitting back like this and not being so aggressive. Um, can you stream in 4K? No. Uh, I cannot stream in 4K, I think. So I actually, it's funny. We can upload in 4K. Uh, and obviously, I've been recording everything in 4K for YouTube. But the, like, I had tried, experimented with even 1440p back in my Twitch days, and that's not something the platform truly supports. Uh, and then I do not believe it's fully supported here either. As far as I know, the only streaming platform that supports that is YouTube. Um, but, yeah, so I stream in 1080p, record everything in 4K these days. But hopefully, I, I would like 4K to be streamable in the future, but I don't see how that would make a lot of sense for anyone other than YouTube. <laughs> because uh, streaming is expensive, man. <laughs> streaming is really expensive. So I don't see why people, why, why they would want to make that available for everyone uh, from a financial standpoint, but I don't know. We'll see. I think 1080p is pretty good. So we should be fine here. And okay, so the tower goes up. I like the houses around the tower. Philip now, for the first time, does not see land scouts. So he's got to be concerned about that. And, man, this has been a really passive Atacama game compared to other games. There's a hole there! Oh my god, Lan, you've got to be kidding me. Game one, it's possible he's never played Philip before, right? It's possible he doesn't know all the things that I just said about this player. And Lan takes losses. And he loses two villagers, but then he also has to deal with the scouts in his base. Now, that will be kind of awkward to maneuver if you're Philip. And Lan wants revenge there. He's not going to find much of it. He's going to get one villager kill. And then the Spearmen are here already. And meanwhile, we have the Scouts. And wow, I was surprised. I didn't think the Scouts would find value here. But another Villager goes down. So not bad at all there. And then over on the other side, Villagers have left the Berries. More Spearmen on the way. And players should be able to protect themselves from the Scouts. But there's a lot of Scouts here, right? So Philip says, okay, I might lose these things eventually. Boom. Who cares if I'm the underdog? I don't care. And he's now going to leave as well, and he might actually get away with the majority of them. Yep, still has three scouts. Meanwhile, on this side, still didn't take an additional loss. Feels to me like Castle Age times are going to be similar here. 
I've got a market right now for Philip. Let's see if he can track these scouts and how he can manage certain aspects of his economy. Because I've noticed the idle time's a little high for the villagers inside that town center. But I love this type of a position for the long term. And for land right now, he's just working off that one wood line. I think it's going to be easier for him to stay safe, but he definitely is behind. Uh, both, in, I mean, he's massively behind, actually, because of the amount of fishing ships his opponent has. And we're starting to see uh, fish trapping as well. So, Philip did go a little crazy. I have never seen someone add seven. Or I guess is it six here? Yeah. Okay, uh, that's pretty high for this level of water. But I noticed that he was fish trapping here already. So, if he calculates that, I think it's more than worth it. Because there's going to be knights out. The other, like, side bonus to this is there's going to be knights out. And you won't have to deal with uh, knights raiding fishing ships. Whereas knights will be able to raid farmers. So if you had farms expanded away from your town center, it'd be a big problem. Speaking of big problems, forging is about to come in. Land's about to get some value here, it feels like. And Philip knows it. So Philip's going to head out of here. And he leaves the gold for now, which isn't the end of the world, but... You know, not able to really bring the scouts back to hold. Didn't expect the forward spearman play from land. And that gold is going to be an important resource here if you want to make knights. And this is that idle time I talked about. Phillips had, he spent a lot of time in and out of this town center. But it's mainly in the town center right now. There's still no gold income as he goes for stable number two. I think he's going to end up selling some of that extra food. Fortunately for him, he has a lot of it. Also, we do have fishing ships in the north for land. So he hasn't completely relied on just the farming of the Franks. And Lan aimed for another villager kill there. Did not get it, but took out the mining camp, which is going to be really annoying. And we have knights on the way now for Philip. Faster to Castle Age, but loses another villager. So you can see, guys, like exactly why you can get excited in Philip's position, right? I feel like from the draft perspective, from the start, like strategically... He has looked really good. But in terms of execution now, you do start to think about things a little bit. Because Lan has had the brighter moments over the last few minutes. Uh, Lan going immediately for Pikeman with a lot of Spearman out, which is huge, I think. And he's also going for Iron Casting, which will apply to the Pikes, but also to the Knights he's making. And he's just going to boom, right? We, we're not going to have Town Centers from Philip. Philip's going to go for Aggression. And aggression can obviously win out here. I think one TC aggression with all in knights, monks, siege is very strong on this map. Sometimes people won't go for the town centers as early as Lan is doing now. Uh, he actually had deleted this town center, and so this is just his second one. Um, I was a little mistaken there. I thought that was actually three. And monastery from both, so monks will be important. And Philip is just camping his gold right now. No town center there. And I would, I feel like you, you almost have to take this fight, but it's a horrible fight to have to take. And so that's why he's going to play some households around here. That's really smart thinking. Because you, you don't want to give those pikemen value right now. The beauty of, the, of knights versus pikemen is that you can run away. Look at land. He's like, oh, you want to hit me with the town center? Nope, just kidding. We've got 10 knights about to be 12 for Philip. Who's not able to get any damage in on land right now. Land's at six knights, about to be eight. Does have those ten pikemen. And land also has some additional scouts. Uh, Philip does too. Those scouts will be helpful in picking off monks. Because there will be conversion attempts. And maybe the scouts won't be alive much longer here for land. And that's a pretty good fight for Philip, all things considered. He'll be able to heal up the knights. It doesn't look like he's lost too many knights. Maybe just one or two. Uh, he is losing a camel here, which hurts. Also, this scout's still attacking the stable, and it's really bothering me. So, Lan, if you could deal with that, or Philip, if you could just send it somewhere else, that would be great. Because I keep seeing the blinking on the minimap and thinking it's something more important than just a scout in a stable. I mean, if he keeps going, he'll eventually take out a stable, I guess. So, kudos to him, but it's, it's tilting me a little bit. <laughs> I wanted to see, are these fish trapped? Okay, so that's not fully fish trapped. This is also struggling. So the food eco is not too great for Philip right now. And you can tell Philip's trying to get the balance down with certain things. And that things are messy. And that he's struggling to, to just 
fo follow the flow of the game compared to Lan. Well, Lan now has 50 villagers, and he's always producing, and he's just waiting at home right now. I also like the approach from Lan to not... Well, he's going to drop the third town center now. I was going to say not rush the third town center down and obviously is not bad his eco is growing but you know the other side thing i like about this is the fact that he is going to go to stone so we can make a castle eventually but look at this fight plus two armors in and i think philip knows the flow of this game he's like i don't have tcs i need to take trades constantly i need to take fights and that fight there clears up all the pikemen not an awful fight for him let's see if he sticks around here looks like he's going to underneath this town center 21 army versus 14. Lan has all those villagers inside the town center. They actually shot a monk there, which is really important. But he does not have his own monks. And he does not have the pikemen. And he does not have the numbers here. And Lan clearly taken back by this. He's, he's a little uncertain on what to do. He's just hoping that town center fire is going to help him as he researches, researches fletching. Philip moving the knights over here. Lan with some quick walls, but doesn't get all the quick walls down. So value will be found there. We're also going to see quite a few kills happen here on Lan's night numbers. And Lan, he needs gold income. He doesn't have gold income. He doesn't have stone income. And he's just got idle villagers everywhere. This is amazing for the challenger. 11 to 7 eco KD. I would love to see some siege to back this up. But Philip's just spamming knights like crazy. And you have to kill those monks. You have to keep Lan off of the gold. That's the key. If he can keep Lan off of gold... Lan is only going to be trickling one pikeman at a time. Lan won't be able to make any more monks. Oh, man, dude. Oh, man. That was an insane moment. I mean, can he keep this going here? You can't sit underneath the TCs forever, right? It feels like with that unit queue compared to Lan, he could stay on that gold, though. More villagers dying here. Lan is feeling that pressure. I don't know if he's felt this much pressure yet. So Lan played two rounds. And the third round was supposed to be against a player named Kongen, which would have been a, a pretty worthy opponent. I think Lan still would have been the favorite, just like here. But uh, Kongen couldn't play. So Lan actually had like quite a bit of a gap between when he played his games. And also, he missed out on like a, a best of five altogether. He didn't play a best of five yet. If there were Rams there, I think that ends the game. Honestly, if there was like one or two Rams to back all that up, this TC would be down and Lan would have some big problems. But he still is the three town centers producing. What he really just doesn't have is army. It almost feels like he needs a second or third barracks here. There's his second. The timing's going to be crucial here. It's still one TC play from Philip. By the way, these scouts from Lan coming back for more villager kills. You've got to be kidding me. These scouts force all the villagers to leave the gold and they've killed 11 units that's ridiculous value from land on pike numbers up to six now remember they do have all that extra attack 73 eco versus 60 and the fish traps are all set up nicely though for philip so that's good so at least he's fixed that because before it said a certain amount of eco units but they weren't really that efficient Efficiency is there now. Is the timing going to be there? Every conversion and every little pikeman attack is so important here. Philip's going to go for the siege. And he's just going to dive and take a fight again. Just like he did before. There's pikemen though and there's monks. you got to take the monks. This thing, I'm not liking this engagement for Philip. It's a forced engagement because he knows he has to. He's not booming on TCs. But he wasn't able to take out a single monk. He wasn't able to really group with his knights much. And Lan even snipes a monk there. So you've got the town center firing on the knights. You've got the monks behind waiting for more conversions. You've got more pikemen on the way. And this might actually be the end of the game here. I think Philip had his opportunity. But, you know, that siege workshop came in late. The initial fight was perfect. But he'd just been on one town center for so long. And he had taken so much damage. To scouts of all things and he wasn't able to to really have like a massive gap in what he killed 16 to 11 kd in the eco land has been right behind him even though land has had less uh, active on the front i think the approach was right earlier right but it lacked the siege then and then right there he has this feeling of i can't wait and truthfully he can't wait because land's just going to drop a castle like he needed that fight to work 
I'm sure he knew exactly what Lan was going to be going for. Also, love this from Lan. He's going to use knights to counter. He doesn't need the knights in defense because he's got the monks and he's got the pikes. And I guess the knights are looping back around now from Philip. Oh, man, he's going to have to react here as well. It, he's desperate for damage, guys. See, if Lan notices this, knights could obviously do damage there, but I think the pikemen will easily head over there. And Lan does react to this. He won't be able to fit all of his villagers inside that town center, so he'll take losses. He's also over here at Philip's Gold, where Philip's taking losses. So a lot of a lot of villagers are going to go down, and even more villagers are going to go down for land. So again, Philip giving himself a real opportunity. If he can find these villas and attack them, you could tell he's distracted. He's probably looking at his own base right now, or maybe looking at these knights and spreading them out. Still, though, 90 eco versus 62, right? Like, one person has three town centers producing. The other person does not. And I think we're going to see that difference now. Because the pikemen can pretty much mop up everything, as can the monks. This castle, it's going to mean the siege push is going to accomplish nothing. And even though Philip's trying his best here, and he's killed quite a few villagers in this raid. He's up to 30 eco kills in this game. He's just still so far behind economically. It's just too many pikemen. Scorpion, very helpful against pikemen, right? Not when you need to push against the castle. So that's going to have to take him somewhere else. And Philip falls back now to his second town center. Uh, here he is actually clearing up the knights. We'll see if he actually set the gather point for the siege somewhere else so he can place it properly. Definitely feels like the next move for Lan is going to be a castle in the middle. And he's starting to dominate the fights with pikemen. His monks could probably move out from his base right now if he wants to be, you know, take a couple risks. He sees a town center foundation, which he's currently denied, but I mean, I feel like he could so easily just drop a castle there shortly. Maybe it won't be so easy, though, because it's a little bit of a shift now from Philip towards the middle. And he also has the scorpions there. But here you have Philip losing the camels that he was chasing down Lance Knights with. Here you have villagers dying to pikemen, which does mean the pikemen are out of position. But look at Lan. He's going to get two conversions. He also has knights. He also has pikemen. And I think these scorpions are not going to be enough here. Lan, even though he had some trouble, even though Philip had a better build, I think, he was able to execute more in the long run. And he, he was able to defend himself long enough. And he just macroed, right? He did exactly what you'd expect the best player to do. Play in towards the town centers, play a little bit more defensive, and then hold on until the economy makes a difference. Obviously a disappointing one for Philip to open up the series because I th thought he was super close to winning that one. But, uh, you know, credit to Lan, obviously, who, wow, was losing some villagers over here. Lan played it very well. And not every day do you see 105 kills and 105 deaths. Um, very even stats as far as that's concerned. As far as the economy is concerned, too, it was also pretty close. But, you know, for Philip, he was just making so many knights, he just needed more, I think. Man, I, I'm i bummed for Philip because that, that build was so clean. And I just wonder if he had the wood when the first attack happened to be able to go for rams. Let me see. Um, okay, we're I'm way off on the time. First attack happened here. Mm. Wait, this was the first attack, right? I feel like he could have gone for siege here. But I guess like... So I think what you, you do have to take the first fight when he took it. Because Lan had lower numbers at this time. Because he was investing into the economy. But I think if while you're rushing this. You go for a siege workshop. And then the rest of your knights keep following in with a couple rams. I think he's okay, but he wasn't floating the wood right there. So it wasn't like he wasn't spending his resources. It could be that his farms were reseeding. It looks like a couple of these farms are reseeding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much at like the worst possible time. Um, and he had auto farm on too. L look at this. Look at this. So he wants the wood for rams, right? Watch his wood count. Okay, so it goes to 200. Exciting times. Could have still done it. And all the farms start to reseed, and he even added a couple more farms there, too. At this point, he's got 19 knights with four more on the way. If he just had two rams to back it all up, I think he ends up taking out the town center. If he takes out the town center, land can't drop a castle. 
land won't have those villagers, and who knows what the rest of the game looks like. GG. So, big positive here for Philip after losing the first game is that he's got some incredible home maps. He has Houseboat, and he also has Arena. Both of those maps are not maps I would necessarily expect land to thrive. Um, man, these players are very close. And normally the, the talking point here is trying to dock the enemy's water. They are right across from each other here. Closer than I think I've ever seen. Uh, Lan has gone for the Dravidians. And then Philip has gone for the Japanese. And honestly, both these civs are very, very even on this map. Uh, very even as to their bonuses. And uh, I, when Dravidians came out, was comparing them a lot to the Japanese. Uh, good infantry, good archer civ. If they have to do anything else, they struggle a little bit more. Uh, there are some differences, obviously, between them. But I think the main difference is probably just going to be Japanese fishing ships allow for a bit more defense in the event a dock comes up over here. Um, and I think the other game changer could just be the fact that Japanese can actually make knights. Um, I, I, there are situations sometimes in Castle Age where adding two knights, let's say against Siege or against a couple of villagers can just be a game changer and Dravidians not being able to do that could obviously have could obviously give them some issues. Um if it goes into ranged units though, so like forgetting about the water, which we shouldn't, but if it goes into land army, I think Dravidians are actually a little bit better because of the faster firing skirms combined with their arbalest, and then they also get bombard cannon. But that would be if this goes towards late game. I think this is definitely gonna come down to if the player is going to be aggressive with any docks. And, I mean, Lan already spotted the Lumber Camp here, so he has to imagine his opponent is close. And Dravidians get plus 200 wood instantly when they get to Feudal Age. So that, that's a free dock and a half there. Well, not really half, but... It's enough of a boost where Lan might be excited about just running across here and dropping a dock. Ooh, Yurumi versus Samurai. Good question. Um, well... I, I don't know. I can tell you that from what I've seen and with my testing with Yurumi when they're elite, they're absolutely bonkers. And uh, <laughs> it's uh, it doesn't feel like a really balanced unit. Uh, let's just put it that way. I think they trade cost effectively versus Paladin and like really, really well. It's because they're a little splash damage. Um, but I wouldn't get your hopes up on that. I don't think we're going to see that type of game. And as good as the Yurumi can be when elite in melee engagements, they are still weak against ranged units. And we haven't really seen, like, it's not like there needs to be a call to nerf the Yurumi. Uh, because you just never see that unit really find value. Um, but yes, in like a melee v melee engagement, they're actually insane. Yes. One-on-one, -on -one, the Samurai, but in groups, the Yurumi. Yeah, I think that's probably a fair guess. Because the reason the Yurumi would be favored against all of the things that I mentioned is just due to that splash damage, which is not going to have as much of an effect in a 1v1 fight. All right, coffee break for me. So they both know. This could be insane. We have seen some ridiculous games on Houseboat. Where both players have docks in the opposing ponds. And here we see two docks for Lan. He actually delayed his third fishing ship for that dock. And that's not something you see every day. And normally the second dock would come up much later. Philip, he's thinking about feudal, as I'm sure Lan is. Both players have done the right thing, though, to dock the outer side. So they can get additional food from the shorefish there. I also noticed Philip's scout is full HP, and Land scout is weak. Uh, it's still completely fine, of course, but just something to think about if there's a scout engagement, or if they're needing to scout if their opponent's going to send villagers forward. It's so much more difficult to stop someone from docking you, if this is the situation. I think both players should try it, and I think this is going to be mayhem. We'll have Land clicking up in a moment. He only has two fishing ships. He's adding the third now. Oh, man. Land's built. Oof. Not as clean. And I, I thought the same thing in the first game, too. Like, once it got to the mid game, you could just see Land's class. But I feel like Philip's Dark Age has been almost perfect in every game so far. 
And okay, this is where the villagers should be heading out. Now, a lot of players will send two vills. We're just going to see one vill here from Philip. Uh, there's the second, actually. And pay attention to that wood count from both of them as we see villagers go to gold as well. Now, I had mentioned, and we haven't seen a lot of people do it, that I think a great play on this map is to go two docks at home and then just play defense. But... I, the more I think about it, because I remember one player tried it yesterday or the day before, I forget which. You're not doing any damage to your opponent then. So, it still puts you under pressure. Feels like if anyone's going to make the mistake, it's going to be you. If you're in that type of situation, but we'll see. It also depends on the dock timings and when they can make ships, right? Like, Philip's dock is up so fast, he can make a ship before land can. Normally, that's not the case. Normally, it takes a while to get across the map. So this really helps the aggressor here. Well, let's see how much commitment Philip has to this. Like, let's see if he tries to get fancy and out of barracks or something. Doesn't look like it. Lan, he does know about this. And so he just adds his third dock. Now, another thing that I thought about yesterday. Even if you're just here, just like stay here uh, throughout Feudal Age. And you don't kill anything, really. You're denying fish. Like, Blue can never send his fish out here. Also, that could be a villager. No, no, no. That's not going to be a villager that goes down. Really heads up play there from Lan, who now has more HP on his scout. He was just going to hop into the transport. But yeah, so those fishing ships are going to venture towards these fire ships. So, I don't know. I feel like aggression is actually... Like, I've seen players like Viper play the defensive route with Malay and just adding a bunch of fish. Oh, that's huge. Very well played there from Philip. But, I mean, you can't really go wrong with offense either, I guess. Or trying to calculate things and talk as if there's a defined meta on a map that is one of the most ridiculous maps that's been in Age of Empires 2 tournaments. So, not sure if that's actually the case, as the repairs don't come in for that villager. She does not cooperate at all. And a demo is on the way here. That demo is actually going to go for the villager, uh, which... Most people would not do there. I think you would always go for the ship because there's going to be another villager here. But obviously, it's something. It was a kill for Lan. It's 2 to 1 KD for him right now. And now there's a demo here. And that's a very good demo from Philip. Kind of evens things out a little bit. Man, look at the food eco, though, for Lan at the moment. What What is he doing differently? Mm. I think it was just the shorefish. I think that's going to... It's, he's going to think he's in a great spot with Eco, and then that might change because he doesn't have a ton on food. The demos land perfectly for him, though. And Philip, maybe struggling with keeping his units queued here. Obviously, only has one villager to repair now, whereas Lan can use more underneath the town center. And Lan with some really good kills, really good defense so far for him. He's just got to be careful of these moments. Into the TC! He doesn't get into the TC. Or it does get into the TC, sorry, but the ship goes down. Lots of docking. Um, having Japanese here would be really helpful if you want to place Mills on the hunt here. Did he scout that at all? He did. I get really excited about that. That was one of my big talking points in Wondering Warriors Cup. Remember, even if you're not winning this battle, just staying here makes it awkward for land to ever fish. It's not like Lan is engaging against your docks right now if you're Philip, so you could be okay. But as I say all this, it's getting a little awkward. Oh, this fire actually blocked the other fire and got some decent value there. But look at Lan. He can't save his fire ship there, actually. The Lan now with six army versus three from Philip. Keep in mind, one of those is a scout scouting around the map. So Lan expected it. He's defended from it, and everything is looking pretty good for him so far. Well, I think demoing the fish is something you do when you're going to lose water. And th that might be crossing Philip's mind right now. Also, he doesn't see any of the fish, right? So he doesn't know where those fishing ships are right now, which is kind of funny, because if you were to look, he could actually demo five fishing ships. But for Lan, he has to continue to produce at home. But I wonder if he's going to consider sneaking a dock over to this side. Sometimes you'll see that later on, like more towards Castle Age. Lan, obviously, and Philip still having to transport villagers back and forth, which is not so fun. 
And that was interesting. Philip started to dock, canceled it. Maybe because he still wanted ship production on the front. Now, guys, what you'll see people do here is they'll send one fire out. And that will attract the attention of the fires from the enemy. And then, they, when those fires group up over your one fire so they're close together, you use a demo. So that's the proper way to do this, but will land pay attention and <clears throat> what attack stance are his units on? Like, I think we're going to see that here. I think he's going to send a fire this way. Demo pops out from the middle dock. It's three fires on the left, two demos and a fire in the middle, and then a demo and a fire on this side. Atlantis really trying to click up to Castle H here. Man, Landless played this super well. Okay, so he actually didn't do what I said. He actually is giving Land an opportunity to, to demo him. Land's getting his demos in. There's a demo, though, in retaliation. And it's a good demo. And it's another amazing demo. And I must I would be so frustrated if I was Land right now. Because you did all that work, but Philip's stubbornness keeps him here. The repairing of, with all the villagers underneath the TC has been so helpful for Land, though, hasn't it? And he just cannot take that fire galley out, Philip. And now a demo comes in. And the demo lands. And Lan is on his way to Castle Age. Lan has played this so clean, guys. And he's actually fishing right in front of this now. And it doesn't even matter. This guy's playing amazing. I would say maybe you could consider trying to demo here. Um, it does seem like Philip is going to lose water, though. We'll see. Now, let's look at Lan's perspective. Okay, he knows water is here. I think he should send two vills. And I think he should try and just dock this. And then he can send ships out. As we see a blacksmith on the on the island there. Uh, then he can send ships out. <clears throat> Castle Age. And try and take out the fish. Try and control that water. What you also can do is just add economy. You can also just... And I love this little side move here from land. He's been over there for a while. But you could just drop town centers. And just focus more on that. But, uh, but yeah, I, I personally would really like to see him just walk over and dock. Because there's nothing his opponent can do to stop it. We wondered if the defense play would work. We saw examples where the defense just made it awkward for that person. And they weren't able to handle the pressure. Lan has handled the pressure like a seasoned veteran. Which I think you could probably classify him as. I mean, he has been in some big events. Just not recently, right? There he reaches Castle Age. He should be getting his, his War Galley upgrade. And uh, I'm a little surprised he hasn't done that yet. But maybe he feels like he doesn't want to do it. Or he doesn't need to do it because he's going to win his water anyways. And that seems to be the case right now. Man, dude, this is... This is some greed, right? So just take out the docks. He won't upgrade his ships at all. And he just drops the town center here. I love the setup, though. He's got a board to take there. And then a town center here, where he has the berries, the wood, and also boar. So, food should be no problem for him. On the other side of things, we'll have Philip with double stable knights. So, a very similar theme to what we saw before, where Philip's going to be aggressive, and Land's going to boom it out and play defensive. Please don't lick your mic again, T90. When did I lick my mic? Did it sound like I licked my mic? If so, I'm sorry. I normally only do that on Mondays. Man, Land's eco is going to be flying, man. It was probably just a sniff. Because um, I'm I'm not feeling too well, so. Alright, so I, I, ju I wanted to check the scouting from Philip. He saw the town center. He is going to make an outpost here. And I mean, land hasn't even added a monastery yet. I feel like if you're going to be doing this, you have to at least add monks. But he doesn't agree. These knights are probably going to be able to notice this, actually. You would see the boar in your fog of war, but you might not be paying attention. And land sees this. And land had gotten some house walls down in Palisades. And just so clean. Playing so well. And, and just like the previous game. Like, just buying himself a little bit of time so his eco makes all the difference. I'm still using this town center, obviously, which adds to the skill element of this map. And he housewalled this to stay, keep his eco safe over here. He's got his wood upgrade, and he's got his farm upgrade, and he's got wheelbarrow. 
And he's going to have double Monastery Monks. And for Philip, I, I know the score is telling him there's possibilities here. But if he doesn't get some real pressure in soon, he is going to be really far behind here. I like the Siege Edition. Um, I'm trying to remember the Dravidian's Monk tech tree. I think they do get Redemption. And here we see TC number four. Look at this from Lan. And Lan notices it. Lan will go for a conversion. Lan will not get the conversion. He's got two more monks on the way, though. And Philip still, like, what I like about Philip is he realizes I have to fight, have to engage all the time. Also, Lan, with a big mistake there. This is what I mean, man. Like, you can play greedy like this, but you everything's got to be on point. Don't tell me he's going to lose another monk. Oh my god! He hasn't gotten a single conversion. He's lost so much of his eco, and he has so much idle time right now as well. Also, I don't think Philip can see this knight. It's kind of hard for me to see. There we go. All of a sudden, there's villagers exposed everywhere to these knights, and Lan is probably on tilt a little bit. And here he can't get the wall down, and things are falling apart for Lan. Great aggression from Philip. Look at the idle time, too. You've got to get villagers back to work. Now, remember, we saw an instance in the previous game where Philip killed a bunch of villagers, and then he ended up losing because he didn't have town centers and eco behind it. So is he going to have Siege to back it up this time? It looks like he does. And I think that Siege is the difference maker. If he can get the Siege on the town centers, Lan might not have the monks. He might not be able to get redemption. Lan could potentially have some problems. But if you do that, guys, if you do that, and Lan gets conversions, which he has done, you need to have your own monks with it. He's got one right now. I think I would wait for two before I show the siege. But then again, obviously he's feeling like he needs to kill. And kill he does. A couple villagers go down there on the wood line. 66 eco versus 57. Pressure is on for Lan. As Philip donates another knight there. To a conversion. A siege workshop's coming up. Lan might not like that position pretty soon. He's unable to get the siege workshop up. Lan has to garrison here because of a knight underneath the gold. Lan Siege Workshop will probably complete here, and there it goes. Uh, Lan had a market earlier. Spearmen were just killed. That kind of sucks. Uh, Lan needs to sell some wood here. And now he's got his own Manganel on the way. Where's the conversion coming from? Oh, here. Delete that. Oh, boy. Well, it's it's been a little sloppy for Philip, but let's see. Oh, my God. Lan is so focused. Guys, he's so focused over here, and who can blame him? Oh my god! I'm so excited! <laughs> oh man, I, I mean, it's very rare you see this happen, but it's completely understandable when it does, right? Big shot here from Lan. I mean, he's, he's defending very nicely on this side with conversions, but he just doesn't realize the whole right side of his eco is getting massacred. Philip also had no town center for a bit there. He deleted his starting TC. He was sick of it. Also, no fish traps either. Like, his eco's really not looking good. So he needs this. <laughs> like, if he... If he kills all this, he still could lose the game. Because of how good the eco's looking here for Lan. He's still producing villagers. Look at the eco KD. It's 25 to 1. But it still shows the difference of the players that Lan is actually pushing this back and that Lan is actually okay. Look, Lan's gonna... He notices now, but he's gonna be like, are you kidding me? Are you serious? It's great defense from Lan, though. He cleared up the siege. He's got monks with knights now. He didn't need to produce knights to get knights in this game. And now I'm worried for Philip. I, I don't know what he can do from here. He wanted to probably castle drop behind a crazy push. I don't know if that's gonna be possible. This is two straight games where Philip has really good openings. Land just defends it, and then his economy is just beastly. Every TC is producing villagers. He's got four of them. His eco upgrades are insane. His monk upgrades are good. His monk numbers are good. And I think the castle, like, a castle here wouldn't do it, right? A castle here wouldn't even do it. You would need the castle somehow to be, like, right between all three TCs. But I will say this about land. He's heavy on the eco, very light on the military. And that can hurt him at times. So... It doesn't seem like he knows what he wants to make right now. And so it's just eco, siege, knights. Until Philip realizes that it needs to be a castle in Land's face. 
And now he's going to see the eco here. And there's the castle. Okay. Interesting moment. Lan might pull over the siege here. Lan obviously is going to try and convert knights. And if he does that, could use the knights against the villagers. That's a lot of villagers, though. That castle goes up. I don't know how good this ends up looking for Philip after the fact, because he's not going to have many knights left. But I believe this castle goes up regardless. He's not going to have many villagers left either. Big losses here. 70%. Will it go up? It might not actually go up. This could be a doubt castle. Are you kidding me? Oh my goodness. That will not go up. I completely misjudged that one. And Philip laughs <laughs> as he goes down to 40 villagers and he calls the GG. I have to say, guys, Lan has looked really good. How many villagers did he lose over here? He lost like 15? 15 villagers lost before he noticed and he still dominated the guy. Defended so nicely on water. And now he has won two fairly awkward games or what could have been awkward games and made it look easy. Uh, still has his home maps in his back pocket. So I think the next game is likely going to be on Phillips' home map, which will be Arena. There's just a different class to this series here, right? Like, I feel like the way Land plays feels like one of the best players out there just due to the economy. And I think if he were to win this series, which he's obviously favored to do, we might see some question marks uh, in terms of the army production. That's been the only thing is he's very macro heavy and not so aggressive, but he has not been able to be punished so far. He ended up with how many conversions that game? Remember, he lost his first three monks, which was really what gave Philip an opportunity. 12 conversions there in that game and had a total of, uh, where is that stat? 116 total eco units in that game. Whereas total eco unit for Philip was 57. <laughs> oh my God. So he doubled it in one game where all those things happened. That's crazy. This is a map where Lan probably is not the favorite. Or let's just say it's not Lan's favorite map. Uh, Lan is playing as the Khmer. Bit of a blast from the past with that pick. Remember, this is a guy who was at his peak in 2020. And back in 2020, I think Khmer were in the top five or close to it in terms of the arena picks. But back then, we didn't have the Poles or Burgundians or some of the other civs. Philip goes for the Poles, the civ that we've been seeing a lot more recently on arena. The land, the Khmer has me thinking a little bit. It always feels like with the Khmer, the thing that makes them good on arena is not their units. It's just the fact that they don't have to make their buildings before they go up to the next stage. So they're just they're just able to go cast lights really fast, able to like add scouts and boom really fast. But there is always a question of what are you going to make with the Khmer? Are you going to make like inferior Arbalest compared to other Arbalest? Um, are you going to make like... Actually, can someone clarify if Khmer get Thumb Ring? I think they don't. So are you going to open with like Arbalest that don't get Thumb Ring? They don't have Bombard Cannon, which feels more and more important in Arena these days. And Elephants are insane, but Elephants are extremely expensive and your economy would have to be ridiculous to be able to go for that. Um, so oftentimes it's like Hussar, Halb, Arbalest, and it's just a timing thing. It's trying to push an early Imperial Age or get all those relics faster than your opponent in Castle Age and then snowball that to victory. Um, I do think that Ballista Elephant would be absolutely insane here. Um, but, you know, I, I'm also just excited to see Ballista Elephants and I'm not sure if that's actually the smartest opening play. I did have a, an upload or two on Arena uh, where we saw Ballista Elephants work out, but it's just so expensive and takes so much time. And it's definitely a, a one and done move. Like it, you pick one unit and you either win or lose the game with it. There's usually no time to be able to, or, or resources to mix in other units. They do not get Thumb Ring. Yeah. Okay. So my, my point stands with Khmer. As for the Poles, farms around their full works, uh, incredibly helpful for their economy. Uh, they receive some gold income when they mine stone. And if they get to their unique techs, their unique techs just allow them to dominate with their stable units. Um, they do also have the unique unit in the Obuk. They also get Bombard Cannon. They also get Arbalest. Also, don't they get Siege Ram too? Like, I think they also get Siege Ram, which we never really see because of all the other things that this Civ has. I could be wrong on that, but I feel like... Yeah, I feel like they also get Siege Ram... Which, even just like Hussar Ram at some stage could be really strong, because those winged Hussars are no joke. 
Yeah, that's true. It's he's up 2-0. So what better time to start going for ballista elephants? <laughs> yeah, they get Siege Ram too. Cool. So um if Lan is going old school builds, I think he'll go 23 pop castle age. Uh he did play a lot of games with Dogal in the past. Uh Dogal used to go 22 pop. I know this because I was on a team with Lan. And Dogal and Miguel. Um, when was that, actually? I think it was earlier on this year. Might have been late next... Uh, 2021, I forget. No, no, no. It was definitely in 2022. I basically was the player who played if Lan could make it because he was working. Um, and it was it was a fun... Really fun event, man. I, I really enjoyed that. I got some good experience. But Lan was... Lan was insane, though. It was like... This guy... So I was in the text group with them, and so like they they've known each other for years, and they all they do is just make fun of each other, right? And so I don't know them on that level. I I feel like I need to bring a little bit more professionalism too, because I'm like a caster, you know, can't be making the same jokes. But anyways, uh, <laughs> so like they just were like making fun of Lan the whole time about how he sucked and how like uh like like okay they'd say Lan you suck and you can't schedule, and then Lan would be like Miguel you're bald. And then Miguel would be like, Dogal, you're fat. And then I'd just be sitting there like, hey guys, when are we playing this week? <laughs> so, anyways, um, it was a fun experience. But what I did learn is that Lan could be an incredible player if he didn't really prioritize the game much. Like, uh, that was the thing. He was working a full-time job and he was still trying to like have a social life and whatnot. So there were times where he was just late and they were like, all right, T90, you're up. And so I'd play and we did well. I... Uh, played really well in one series against Gamer Legion, even with like Tato and I think I think it was Tato Slam and who was who else was in that game? Oh, forgive me. I, I think Jordan maybe. But anywho, then Land comes in and it's just like, oh my god! Like I can't even compete with this guy. He barely plays the game. I'm playing this game full time, and especially his archer play is just so so good in team games. And he is doing 24 population, actually, with his Castle H. The idea here, though, is that you want to be able to go immediately up to Castle H after you hit Feudal. We'll see if he can execute on that. Yo, KJ, thank you for the... <clears throat> excuse me. Thank you for the stars. Um, the, No, no, no. Black Forest was one of the games that I played against Gamer Legion. Uh, the one you're thinking of is the... Uh, I think it was called Crop Circles. And I, I'm just going to say it. I completely worked over Tato, completely mind gamed him. He didn't think I was going to drush, killed a couple of villagers, defended from his drush. I was 2v1 against Slam and Tato. So I had to hold my side against two people and not falter as Miguel and Dogal went to the other side. So it definitely felt great. And it was funny. I went into that series with no nerves whatsoever. And after I played well, then the nerves showed up, and that was when I learned it's the, uh, the the nerves that you feel when you should win and when there is expectation that kills you. The uh, if you go in as the underdog, you don't feel near as many nerves as you're just like, well, I'm the favorite here. Or sorry, the other guy's the favorite, so if I lose, that's expected. Is a much better feeling to be on that side of things. Which is probably why I was able to get like a tourney win off of Lix, for example. Because I was just like, well, Lix is a way better player than me. So no pressure here. I shouldn't stress too much. Phillip's on the way to Castledge, obviously later because he had to make his buildings. Uh, so far, everything's looking so good for him. Really liked his Lumber Camp, by the way. I showed it a couple times as I was blabbing my mouth. I'm not sure if you guys were impressed with it, but he's been able to get a ton of value <clears throat> from one Lumber Camp. If you think about how many trees he's chopped... And how you would place a normal lumber camp. Like a normal lumber camp here, for example. It looks it looks like this. Like he still hasn't taken this row of trees yet. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the thing that I find awkward with the pulls is going for the stable and also the boom. I find the boom really easy. What a lot of players do is they sell stone and buy food so they can get their wood and their farm upgrade later. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if he sells another 200 or so stone. That's what all the best arena players are doing these days. 
Uh, Lan is going to go scout. Surprise, surprise. And he's just going to boom. It's always lovely to see this, by the way. Just see farmers right next to the lumber camp. Probably would confuse anyone who's new to the game and doesn't know about the Khmer. Uh, there's the monastery. And this will be all for relic control, obviously. And I'm not sure if I agree with the statement in chat that you hate the build for Philip. I think things are looking pretty good for him. Right? He'll be able to go for more scouts. And he's going to add a Spearman here. He should be fine. He should be able to compete for the Relics a bit. Obviously important to do so on Arena. And he's going to come home now. And there's his Monastery. Let's just see if he can squeeze in the wood in the farm upgrade, right? A lot of times you can't do it unless you sell 200 stone. And yeah, there you go. 200 stone. And now he's going to squeeze in the upgrades. Yeah, I like that. I think this is the correct approach. Be as greedy as possible. Because you get so much food... When you complete a farm now around a full work. And please, don't feel like this is out of the ordinary, how he's doing this. This is pretty much what I've seen with all the arena games I've watched. So we're going to have a knight, actually, from land, which is very uncommon. And he's got three scouts. And then we also have two spearmen, three scouts, and then a monk's going to be coming for both players. But Philip's got, I think, the better position in the middle right now. We will see. Uh, yeah, Lan, Lan is from Spain. Lan is from Spain and Philip is from Germany. Lan is not Canadian. That, will we see the farms go up, right? Looks like Philip got a little distracted with the micro and got housed temporarily. This is an important moment. Like, these farms need to be coming up here. The food eco right now is way better for Lan because he's just got all these efficient farmers working. And there are those farms around the full work now from Philip. You obviously want all of your farms to be around full works with the poles. We'll see if he can find the space for it. We'll see how this fight goes as the monk goes down. Still very confused as to why we have seen a knight here from land. Like, maybe he felt like he needed something more to tank against Spearman, but... I don't like that move at all. I think that it doesn't really add much to him and his situation. And here he comes. He will see that that relic's on the way back for Philip. So Philip's going to get the first relic. Also got two kills. So I'm liking his start so far. And there's another full work. We'll probably see a bunch more farms around that. And he's also adding the second town center. Lan obviously will be faster to the second town center or has been. So he will be booming a little bit better than the pulse. But once these farms complete around this full work, I'll check the food collected. I'm curious. But it really starts to spike in these instances. Hmm. That knight was neither efficient nor sufficient. I mean, it's just not... Whatever word you want to apply to it. I know you guys are kind of joking around in chat right now. But I just, I just don't think it's a very helpful tool here. If anything, it helps your opponent. Because knights get converted so much faster than a scout or a light calf. And... That's the, that's the thing monks are made for, is a knight. And look at the scouts. They go in for the monks. And this is not something Lan's really been doing. Because the spearmen, I guess. And so two monks go down. I think that's three monks in total that Lan has now lost this game. I think the spearmen should be pulled away. So they don't all get converted. But Philip, he's ready, man. And he'll take that spearman back. Lan deletes it, so that doesn't happen. So, two relics for land, not too bad. The other two relics, however, are over here, so it'll be a pretty tough journey for him to get them. And now I'm curious on the food collected. It's still probably higher for land. Okay, but it's close now. Total resource is obviously higher for the poles player. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys, sorry. <clears throat> I, um... Realistically, I probably shouldn't be casting today. I woke up with a very sore throat. I was... I could tell my cold was getting a little worse ever since I got home. And so, you know, I was like, I should drink tea and I should drink water. And I probably shouldn't drink anything sugary or anything crazy over the next few days as I try and get better. And then we had some friends over last night. I wanted to have a good time. And instead of one drink, I had a couple. And of course, it was all like, you know, like champagne and crap like that. It's like absolutely horrible for someone with a sore throat. <laughs> so... Uh, well, I woke up this morning. I definitely regretted it, but I, I, I don't actually regret it. I had a good time. I hope everyone else had a nice New Year's. Um, but yeah, just feeling a little, little scratchy, you know?
a little itchy. Anyways, Castle goes up on the front, and this is not something that Lan can deny. Uh, it probably wishes he had the knight here now. But this is an amazing castle spot for Philip, isn't it? It'll be on the wall, so he can break in. He then can take more stone, which in turn means that he gets golden come from that, because he's poles, which is disgusting. He's going to be able to get these relics, because Lan lost all of his scouts. And now what does Lan prep for here? Now, Lan might be thinking this could be a faster Imperial Age for Philip, but Philip could do a number of things behind this. He could easily add town centers if he wanted to. I say easily. He doesn't actually have a lot on wood right now. Three on wood, which makes me think that maybe he will go fast imp and not invest into more town centers or farms. Lan's definitely thinking his opponent's going fast imp. He's uh, sending villagers to stone now. He's on four TCs. He wants to click up here. He's intentionally idling his TCs to click up. And what he's going to try and do is drop a castle here so he can treb this back. But yeah, that gate's going to go down. And land doesn't have loom right now. So what is... What? Is, what, what? Okay, that was clearly a misclick, right? Hello? Uh, okay. I mean, even just the scouts could be a problem for him with no loom. And there he loses uh, a villager. Also converts two scouts. And Philip is on the way to the Imperial Age now. Keep in mind, he could drop a second castle, maybe even a third by the time he's an imp. And he's going to drop a stable now, so it seems like that's his long term. Hmm. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So three relics for Philip. Both are on the way to imp. Lan has a vill lead. But I don't know what Lan's army comp's going to be. I don't think he's going to have a lot, honestly. I think it's just going to be a castle into Trebs, and then he's going to hope for the best from there. He's dropping a market now, so he can maybe buy and sell some resources. And there's the privilege upgrade. The Sriracha privilege. And that means the knights cost, uh, what is it, 60% off on gold? I still think that's too much, by the way. I think poles are already insane with their bonuses. Anyone else in agreement? I don't want the tech to be bad. I want the tech to be good. <clears throat> That's just bonkers, though, Com combined with everything else. Arbalest, Bombard Cannon, Siege Ram. Best farms in the game. Their farms are better than any other farms with the way it works. It, I would like to see Slav farms buffed up, so Slavs are actually, like, truly the, feel like the best farms in the game. And then you got the Winged Hustlers with Trample Damage, which I guess is cool, but I think 60% is too much. I would like 45% or 40%. I've... Been on record with that quite a few times. But, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. <clears throat> we do see an awful lot of pulls. And we do see a lot, awful lot of situations where it's very tough to stop this. But Lan, he has been so good with his economy in this series, man. 83 villagers versus 56. There's a massive difference with the eco. Buff pull, Buff pulls, please. Make your opponent pay the gold when you build the knight. Yeah, that... Don't say those things, because I think the devs would actually do it with the next expansion. So, don't want to give them any ideas. Like, where's his army, though? Like, what what is Lane's plan with army? He had some monks. The guy has loom now, so that's good. But, like, this trebuchet is going to go down to some knights and some scouts. Lane's making a stable. He's making a barracks. I mean, he had the right idea to go for trebs. But I don't think he ever had anything to back it up. He's clicked cavalier now. And oh no, don't tell me he's going to lose this Treb. Oh god, he loses the Treb. Now Philip is an Imp. And Philip is going to have Trebs out of three castles. And so Lan's going to lose some ground here. He's probably going to lose his relics. And Lan really doesn't have a lot of gold left. He just has this gold to take. And the thing about Slash of Privilege Knights is they're not expensive. So you can spam them from 60 eco. And also, you don't have to stress as much about losing them versus pikemen or something. Because it's a cheaper unit. It's not as costly of a loss for you. Land just looks straight up confused. Which a lot of players look like when they play Kimura and Arena these days. Which is why you don't see it as much. I don't think he knew what he wanted to make here exactly. I think he was worried that if he made his castle here, that he would be out-trebbed. Because there's double castle from his opponent, and I get that. But the Cavalier switch is the biggest question mark for me. He's just going to go full Pikeman now. So he would probably consider Cavalier to be a little bit of, bit of a mistake there. 40 Villager lead for Lan. 
And Land's going to lose those relics. I'd like to see Philip go snag them. And I'd like to see Philip continue pressuring. And I'd also love to see the Cavalier upgrade. I mean, you are in the Imperial Age right now. But right now, he's just opting for numbers. Now, the beauty of the Poles, too, is you have all these castles. And your unique unit is actually pretty good at helping out against something like Halberdier. So we could see Philip continue to make more of those. This is kind of funny. Uh, that was a weird moment there. <laughs> that monk is just standing right... Grab the relic and run. <laughs> run, quickly. Monk's just standing there. I don't think either player knows. For some reason, the castle is prioritizing the mill instead of the monk. Big moment in this game, guys. 140 pop for land. His opening was awkward, but he might be able to push this castle back. We see Old Book Spam starting now for Philip, who will likely lose a castle as he sends his Cavalier into the back of Land's base. Land has no fletching. Also, I said Cavalier, they're knights, right? So he splits up. Philip tried this in the previous times in this set. The Old Book are actually doing a pretty good job at defending the Trebs right now, and the, the knights are getting some villager kills. 13 villagers killed so far. And that'll probably rise to about 20 or so. Meanwhile, we have repair villagers on this castle from Philip. Keep in mind, he's now 30 villagers behind. He loses his castle, but Land could lose his castle too. And great job from Philip to spread out with the knights. He still just got so many knights in so many different areas. And the Obuk produced so quickly. He went from 0 Obuk to 20 Obuk like it was nothing. He just wants to take Land's castle out here. I think if you take Land's castle out, you're feeling good. And that's exactly what he does. Land is an army of full health. And Philip's just going to keep taking these fights. He figures, I can spam. He's stuck in here. And he allows the old book to take the, the bulk of the attack here. Keep in mind, only two upgrades. They're not elite old book or anything. But the old book are just melting the halves. <laughs> Again, this this the Civ doesn't need Cavalier that are 60% off. Look at that unit. Then again, I mean, Halb really would be bad against any type of infantry unique unit. But holy moly, man. That was the perfect addition here from Philip. Ooh, now is the population lead. Still has two castles to push with. Still could get the relics and is continuing to raid. Land calls the GG. That is the end of this game. So, I would say that if you were to go back and watch what I said in the first five minutes of this game, that is precisely what happened here. Land had a good economy. Land was able to get Castle Age faster, but he didn't know what to do. He had no clue what to go for. And that's a big problem with Khmer. Um, I do, however, think there's a world where he had he opened Halb right away. And had he had he gone for a university and tried to go for like uh, hand cannons and Halbs, I think there was actually a world where he, where he could win this. Because the old book didn't come in until a little bit later. If you would have had ha higher Halb numbers, the initial night raids wouldn't have killed 33 villagers. It might have been, let's say, like 10 or 15. And Philip was pretty low eco there. Um, normally you want to be on three town centers and have a lot more farms up. He was going to work on that now. A great job from Philip, who dominated the middle, dropped that castle, and turned it into an aggressive early imp game. I think turning it into an aggressive early imp game made it more difficult for Land to figure out what he could do. Land collected more wood and more food, but the stone and the gold income from Philip was enough, and uh, the timing and the pressure was awesome there. All righty. Lithuanians for land. Okay, well, this explains it. <laughs> this explains why you would pick crossover Arabia. I've talked about it a lot, but I think Lithuanians with the proper build are possibly number one on this map, but they are most certainly like in the top three. I think Japanese, uh, Lithuanians, and then some people would say Huns is third. Uh, the third's actually kind of tough for me. I think Japanese, Lithuanians, and then other civs like Huns, uh, Byzantines are, are preferable. Maybe like a shout out to like Malians, Persians. But with all the extra food you have with the Lithuanians, you can delay food income and just take wood a little bit earlier. And that'll lead to a faster dock and faster fishing ships, which gives you a big head start heading towards feudal. Um, yeah, we'll see how land wants to play it otherwise. Sometimes you'll see the Lithuanian player use that faster uptime to go for scouts. Uh, if he wants to take the water, you could use that faster uptime to you know scout your opponent's pond and then go there and dock. But if this gets mid-game, I think Lithuanians have the higher peak, but I do think that the, the Huns are very flexible and good in messy, aggressive situations with their cavalry archers, 
and then also with their night production. So we shall see. Maps look pretty good. Um, I actually prefer Land's map. I feel like he's got so much wood around his TC. Look at this. This is the TC. One, two, three, four, five wood lines. And then here, you've got three wood lines. So I don't know exactly what happened there as far as the scripting is concerned, but uh, super easy wall off. Actually, so good that he could go for a Lithuanian fast castle, which is a thing. Uh, you could do it. I think it's a little risky and opens you up to some attacks, even if you can wall. And it's probably better to play safe. But I've seen people go for four or five on wood and just make like six fishing ships and just wall up and go fast castle. But by then, your opponent's going to take map control, take the other pawns, and there's big reasons why at this level you probably should not be doing that. Um, bump, 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 bump. T90, what do you think about Poles not getting Cavalier? Cheap Knights, but they don't get any better, anything better than Knights. No, I think Poles getting Cavalier is, is important. And I think the unique tech is also really good. Um, and, and like, good as far as suits them. Um, I, I think this slotch of privilege is a really cool idea. Uh, however, I think 60% off on knights with a civilization that receives gold when they mine stone, with the civilization that gets so much food when they place the farm around a forward is just too many things combined. So I, I don't want the unique tech to be removed. I just I just think it should be less off. That's all. Um, but I also think that Burgundian should see more of a nerf. And I also think Bohemians shouldn't get both mining upgrades. And basically, there's just like two expansions that I kind of have issue with. And I think the devs have kind of had issue with power creep for the game. So then it's a question of like, if you do one, are you going to do the others? And uh, I, I don't know if the devs ever want to do that. It feels like they are very happy with the Hindustanis, Gujaras, Bohemians, Poles being near the top of every single tournament. Uh, at least as it stands right now. So we'll see. You know, the alternative, obviously, is you, you want to buff like 25 sips. <laughs> so... Um, that'd be cool too, right? Because then we get, like, all these patches over the, uh, you know, the many years and months could have situations where, you know, like, Portuguese got something new recently, right? Like, we could have all those other civs receive some new things too. But we won't talk too much more about that now. <clears throat> uh, we do have that lead as we expected from Lan. And Philip's gonna run right into the town center! Oh, pain! But at least the scout's alive. But that really hurts here. Uh, he's one hit away from death. And so that means he can't really stay around Lan's base. Because Lan will try and track him down. And the other thing you can't do. Is you can't use this scout to stop any future docks. And you can't even like realistically block. Like sometimes what players will do is they'll patrol their scout here. To kill a villager. If that villager is going to dock their island. Or islands. Uh, sorry their, their pond. So you can't really use the scout in the same way. <laughs> Power creep for newer sims. Meanwhile, Sicilians crying in the corner. It still cracks me up that Sicilians were like kind of mid-table in win rate. And the devs nerfed them more than Burgundians when Burgundians <laughs> had this ridiculous pick rate and play rate. I um, I did point out how ridiculous that was at the time, but yeah. Also, I'm not a big fan of Sicilians. Like, I've been clear. I'm I, I, not a fan of their civ design. I think... There's more they could have done with, like, the whole dungeon and uh, sergeant play. And they just kind of said, yeah, let's just give them good nights. But, um, but yeah, I will, it, I will agree with you there that uh, that certainly didn't add up for me. All right. We've got uh, six fishing ships here for land. You can see he just scouted this, guys. So he scouted to see if there was a dock. Also, he's probably done this. So when he's not paying attention, his fishing ships will know there's more deep fish out there. It's a very thorough, actually. Oh, I, I definitely did, Kala. I definitely did. You're not wrong. And, uh... Wow, a lot more fishing ships from the original dock than you normally see. As we just see the stable from Lan. And, again, Lan's gotta be loving life. He's Lithuanians. He's gonna be faster to scouts. His opponent's scout is very weak. He's got an amazing map to wall up. For Philip, he's gonna have to work super hard here. And I think you can realistically just control the map with some scouts. But I think an important aspect that you can't forget about is always docking the other pawns. You can see Philip now is scouting this left side. Um, I, I don't know if the word 
I, I, I would, wouldn't want to describe my... Oh my god, Lan just kills the scout. <laughs> no hesitation there. You know, JP, I, I think... I, I Maybe I should just save the conversation for another time. Um, and we should talk about the games. Because I, I have a habit of uh, turning a two-minute tidbit into like 10 minutes and then forgetting about other aspects of the game. But but again, like, who did Lan pay of... Uh, who, who... How much did he pay to the Viper to get these map hacks? Like, holy crap. He's full walled, buries gold everything. And then the main thing he just needs to keep an eye on is the pawns. And even if he doesn't go out and kill villagers... Him controlling pawns and having lots of fish, that's going to at least mean that he has a good spot going towards Castle Age. And then in Castle Age, obviously, you could decide on what to do from there. So I feel a little bad for Philip because of this map generation. Uh, the way the draft panned out as well is he was always going to have a slightly lesser sieve with Lithuanians being picked so early. But this map is absolutely insane. I've used this version of Cross, by the way, for like three straight events. Uh, we spent so much time doing this version of Cross. It's actually the same version that we had used for uh, Hidden Cup 4. But we just removed the relics in the corner, which I think Hidden Cup had. So it's not like it's like a new version, which we haven't tested a lot. But it is random map scripting. And you know, to, to see walls and then lose a villager like that, just it's such a painful experience for Philip. <laughs> it does not feel good, I could tell you that much. Here he comes, though. Look at this. He's going to drop a dock. And, and at the same moment, Lan actually is scouting with his fishing ship there. So Lan, understanding he's vulnerable there, as he's up to 10 fishing ships now. He's really fishing heavy from home. Also trying to fish over there on that west side. It's always tough when your opponent's walled to know how much army to make. You don't want to overmake army in Feudal Age. We've got Forging coming in for Lan here, who... Made more scouts than I think Philip was expecting. And that's really clean micro from Lan. He's got five kills, zero deaths, guys. He hasn't lost a unit. He has, however, not made a fire galley on that left side to, to be able to defend himself. His resources are looking good. He's just been not greedy, but, you know, just calculated in what he's been able to do. There was no risk of anyone ever docking him here, so he added more fish. He was over here very early, and now he's making fire galleys because he noticed it. Now he'll add the second dock, too, because he knows he might be behind in numbers. Lan is playing this game as clean as you like. And he's even going to try and send a villager over to the east side now, which is precisely what you would want to do in this situation, right? And so Philip, he's fishing at home, but he's obviously so worried about defending himself at home right now as well, because he saw the scout numbers. And honestly, I think that he... Has done a fine job, all things considered here. Just losing one villager. He didn't make too many scouts. He's just going to rely on spearmen in defense. He might use the market to help himself get up. And, oh, I just realized Land actually canceled forging. So he had clicked forging and then thought better of it. And now he's going to get that upgrade. Ooh, yikes, man. Yikes. Yeah, that, that is not what Land would have wanted. I wonder what he was doing there. Oh, he was trying to quick wall in this vill. So he failed the quick wall, so the villager dies, and he lost those scouts. That's a really good moment for Philip. He needed that. There's something I want to see. Come on, man. Drop the archer ranges. Click bloodlines in your stable and drop the archer ranges. Yeah, there we go. This is what Huns have to do, it feels like, in most cases in our meta these days. To spam those cav archers. Opening with scouts is great. But those cav archers are far too cheap to avoid making them, in my view. Fires v. Fires here. Land microing back. Philip not microing back right away. Just another big difference between the two players. Let's see if Land pulls back in the end here. Looks like he'll be happy to take that trade. Remember, he got, he's got two fire galleys producing. Behind this, we only have one for Philip. And so Philip's just not going to be able to contest the fish here. Land actually adding a few more scouts. I mean, he'll be really frustrated with himself that he lost those scouts a moment ago. He will have bloodlines. He will have forging. We have to imagine this is going to be knights for him. And he starts off with the monastery. And he sees this relic, this relic, and this relic. And, and he sees four out of the five relics, actually. The only one he doesn't see is in the north. Uh, does this cross have the same amount of fish per pond compared to latter version or less? 
Honestly, I, I don't remember because they used to have so much fish on four lakes. And then I was very vocal about that. I was like, yeah, well, we have less fish because we want the, the map not to be as fish heavy. And we want them to eventually need to switch into land. And back then they had uh, deep fish, which had 350 food. And they never had 225 food, which is what we have. Uh, funnily enough, we have salmon. And like, I'm a big fan of salmon, which I'm sure many of you know. But I think now, if you look at Four Lakes, they have similar amounts of fish to the version that we use here. They, they're pretty sure they changed it. But I don't know how many. I know that they have 225 food fish instead of 350 now. But I would have to, uh, I'd have to look. Uh, it's much closer than it used to be. Let's put it that way. All right, three ranges for Philip. He's not full walled on the right, but he will be soon. He is full walled on the left, so all this is very helpful. Uh, Lan is going to defend this water just fine. And I would like to see him maybe add a few more fishing ships. But ultimately, he's played this near perfect so far. 12 to 8 KD. It's not like Lan is dominating Philip, but he's definitely ahead. And he also has a civilization that I think can do some crazy things if they have a lead. Oh, God. Philip. Oh, no. Gate, maybe? We can't house wall. And oh, sheesh. Hello? Guys. Hello? Just passing. Okay. Well, he runs in. Philip now notices. Land might have done that intentionally, actually, because he didn't want the attack signal to come in until he was in his opponent's base. Please don't chop that tree. Please don't chop the... Oh, okay. Well, okay. The units are in the woodline anyways. This is obviously horrible for Philip, who had sent a lot of his cav archers to the corner. He went to the right corner to see if Land had any fish there. And now he has to bring his cav archers back home to deal with this. And he's lost a few villagers there. Pretty painful stuff for him as Lan is on three TCs. This is like the classic Lan play we've seen in this series. Just booming, booming, booming. But he's just so smooth with everything that he does here, guys. The pond defense and vision on the right. The vision at, at home to know that he could play it as he has with so many fish. Might need to consider fish traps earlier than he'd like. But he's doing that even, like, this is this is crazy. He's going to get relic number one, probably will get relic number two. The main thing I will say is he's producing so many vills, he's not producing knights. I, I find this tricky as well with, with knight civilizations, uh, where I go for all these heavy eco upgrades, and I want my eco to be as perfect as possible in the long run. And then once I'm on three town centers after the first wave, I'm like, uh-oh. What do I do? And so you never like it's part of your cycle as a player to always uh, create villagers. So sometimes in your mind, you're like, I need to stop making bills. I need to make knights. But then as you're doing other things, you just make bills again because it's a very common thing for you to do. I like the Scorpion edition, but I also love the fact that we're now seeing a Siege Workshop on the front from Philip because Manganel Cav Archer could just wreak havoc on Land's Eco. And this hill is a wonderful little spot to be in. <clears throat> Excuse me. Land doesn't have plus two armor. Land only has five knights right now. And Land has to abandon this woodline. Remember, Land has like a gift of a map right here. Like, this is one of the best maps you could ask for. And his monks have just done such a great job. Converted a couple units so far. I'd like to see Land remember this knight is here. I wonder if he will. He could easily kill a few villagers while Philip's not paying attention. Thumbring now for Philip. No ballistics. I don't mind no ballistics, though, because oftentimes it's a choice of do I go siege or do I go for ballistics? And I think siege actually is more important right now because it can take care of the scorpions pretty easily as well, right? And Lan can't get anywhere close to this fight. Lan might also even be missing husbandry here. I mean, he's really in an awkward spot as he has more stables. And he needs a good Manganel shot. His siege workshop could go down if Yellow continues to focus on this. 30 eco lead for land. We, we've seen this so many times. We saw it in game number one. We saw it in game number two. Actually ended up being more than 30 at times. And wow, land defends so nicely there. And the problem with an all-in situation is if your push ever stops, your opponent's probably going to have enough to kill you. And so it feels like that Manganel needed to stay alive, needed to pressure the workshop. The Cav Archers needed to stay Land's resources are looking insane right now. And he hasn't really idled his town centers that much, right? 
He has only one relic, so he doesn't have a lot of extra attack. But he does have plus two attack because he has the plus one he researched and then the relic. And he has quite a few stables here. He's at 12 knights now. His opponent's at 30 cav archers. And we see more ranges and we see university. If anyone's thinking, why don't you just add more villagers? If you're Philip, you have the food. It's because he's not in that frame of mind. He's the underdog here. He feels like he has to go for crazy army numbers to ever have a chance. He's going for all the numbers and all the upgrades that he can here. But that is so many knights with so much attack here. Plus, there's going to be some siege to back it up. It just feels like land pushing this away for, for a moment allows him to do so many other things. Like get relics, expand his economy. And yeah, these cab archers, they're good. Don't get me wrong. They're very good. They can whittle down these knights. But they need to be killing villagers or something right now, right? Land backs away. And let's see what he's been able to do with that space. He cleared up a Cav Archer there. He's going to clear up the Cav Archers here. Probably will head over to get this Relic. He's brought a Monk forward. He's got some Scorpions in Siege waiting. And he's going to try and pull back here. Ballistics is now on the way for Philip. And he's just going to heal up those Knights. And I think he can be as patient as possible. Sometimes you'll see players send about 10 Villagers to Stone in these instances too. He couldn't easily take stone, and yeah, there's uh, there's the stone mining. It's kind of at an awkward spot. Also, that villager is just repairing the siege workshop, which is kind of funny. Okay. Land probably feeling very clean and comfortable in this situation. He wants to get the relic, which he won't be able to get. And I think he's heading over towards the other one as well. And here come those cab archers from Philip. So he has fully upgraded Castle Age cab archers. Not too bad, right? Not something you see every day either. Okay, Scorpion's out of position over here from the main group. Lan has his villagers on stone. By the way, he I, when I said 10, I was just thinking of like a random number. The fact that he actually sent 10 to stone is pretty crazy. <laughs> I don't want you guys... like some. I, I understand that a lot of you guys are already wowed as you should be with how amazing the pro players are in our scene but i sometimes i'll like i'll make a call out and it's so specific and it was just just luck that i need to clarify it so you guys aren't like that's a meta thing like that's something they think of in this moment like yeah if you have 93 villagers you send 10 villagers to stone no it's not quite like that it just felt right as we see land on the way to imp and so philip 50 eco behind now Desperately needs a fight, and oh, that shot hurts so much, man. And the reason Scorpions are good here is because they do damage to multiple units. They pass through that group. It's very awkward for Philip to engage when there's Scorpions there. Now, he could take out the Scorpions, but it'll add up. He's missing 800 HP on this group of Cav Archers. The Monks, obviously, are going to be a target as well, so they can't convert or heal up the Knights. And then if the knights actually close in, the scorpions are getting hits. And yeah, this is so good for land. 22 knights. And the GG's called from Philip. Philip, honestly, really promising player. He got all the way to this final best of five. He was completely outclassed here by Lan. But remember, Lan is a former top 10 player. So Philip was kind of unfortunate that Lan had taken some time off and then wasn't placed in the gold or platinum in the original bracket because I don't think he even signed up or was active enough to really have any tournament experience to get placed in the first season. And so Land came back and he was like, listen, people, I mean business again. And so he finds himself in gold for season two of Titans League now, uh, which will basically be starting this week and going into January and February of 2023. Uh, I'm really curious to see how Land performs in gold league, guys. Uh, we'll, of course, have time to talk about the brackets after our final series, which will be coming up next. But, like, having seen Lan play here, his economy is just insane. <laughs> and his decision-making smooth. And I could see the guy actually getting promoted out of gold. Now, I haven't seen gold-level quality I, I, recently. I've only been casting silver-level quality, so it could be that he's just above those players in silver and then is going to fit in in gold and not be top eight but the guy's insane and i think he's only going to get better too so uh well played from land happy to have him back uh and getting closer to being with the big boys again 
Uh, and then for Philip, his build orders and his strategy, all of those things is precisely what I wanted to see from players in silver. This is a player who probably would not have had this opportunity, who might not have been able to shine like this if, if an event like this didn't exist. So I hope that this opportunity motivated him. I mean, you got to think next time we have silver bracket, he's going to want to play and, and try and you know, perform again because he beat Andre 3-2. He beat King Boo. He beat the second seed and the third seed. He just couldn't beat the first seed in LAN. Uh, but once again, congratulations to LAN. He played really, really good. Um, and this came as no surprise to me that he would move on.